All right, good morning and namaste to all of you. Let's start our Sunday Gita class with the prayers. Oh, Parthai Pratibodhitam Bhagavata Narayan Swayam Vyase Nagratitam Puran Munina Madhye Mahabharatam Advaitam Ritvashini Bhagavati Mashtadashadhyayane Amutvam Anusandhami Bhagavata Gita Bhagavashini Namo Astute Vyas Vishal Buddha Full Arvind Ayat Patra Neta Yen Tavya Bharat Tail Purnaha Prajwalito Gyan Maya Pradipa Parpanapari Jata E Totra Vetra Ekapane Gyan Mudra E Krishna E Gita Amridu Namaha Sarvop Nishdoga Vo Dogada Gopal Nandana Parto Vatsa Sudhir Bogata Dugdam Gita Amritam Mahata Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kansacha Nur Martanam Devaki Parmanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Kurum Bhishma Drone Tata Jadra Chala Gandhar Nilotpala Shalle Gravati Kripen Vahani Karnen Vela Kula Ashavatam Vikar Nagur Makra Duryodhan Avartani So Tirna Kalu Pandway Ran Nadika Vartaka Keshava Para Shari Vacharojam Lam Gita Arthagandhotakam Nana Kyanak Kesaram Harikatha Sambodhan Abodhitam Loke Sajan Shat Pade Rehrehe Pepi Manam Muta Buyad Bharat Pankajam Kalimal Pardhansi Nashreyase Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langyate Giren Yat Kripat Mahavande Parmanand Madhuam Yam Bram Varun Indra Rudra Marutahas Kunvanti Divyestave Vede Sang Padkram Upanishade Gayanti Yam Samaga Diana was theatre Gatain Manasapa Shanti Yam Yogino Yasyantam Navidusur Asurgana Devaye Pasmeyanam Chapter Eighteen, the last chapter Moksanyas Yoga. In the last couple of verses, uh, <clears throat> repeatedly Lord Krishna is telling us that do your duty but fix your mind on me and with my grace you will overcome all the obstacles. But if from egoism you will not hear me, you shall perish. So he is not telling us not to do the duty. He is not saying run away from your duties. Do the duties as a karma yogi. Okay? Do not fix your mind on the result. Just do the best you can. And now let's start the class with verse number 59. He is telling us if we don't do that, what really happens? It's like a word of caution by Lord Krishna. Yat ahankaram ashritya na jyotasaya iti manyase mithya esha vyavsaya te prakriti tvam niyokshyati. Yat means if ahankaram egoism. Ashritya having taken refuge in na yotsye. I will not fight okay, because Arjun is in the battlefield and his duty is to fight. So for us, it could be any duty we are supposed to do, any action. Iti means thus, manya say you think. Mithya, vain, eshaha, this, vyavsaya, resolve. Te means your, prakriti, nature, tvam, your, Niyokshyasi will compel. So filled with egoism, if you think I will not fight, when in this your resolve, your nature will compel you. So this is a very general statement of truth. Lord Krishna is repeating again and again for us. Due to a sense of self-importance, 
that is ahankaram. If the self-conceited person, and over here he is talking to Arjuna, so he is saying that if you think that I will not fight, you shall be thinking this in vain. Because we know that temperament of Arjuna was Kshatriya, highly passionate. His Rajagun will assert itself. That is what the nature is. Nature will compel you. Because the false arguments raised by Arjun for not fighting the battle are all compromises made by his ego with the situation. In that situation where he had to fight with those great warriors, his relatives. So that was making him run away from that battlefield. So Lord Krishna is saying even if you were to follow your temporary attitude to desist from fighting, it is a law of nature that your mental temperament will assert itself at a later period in life. And at that time, you may not have the field to express it. You won't be able to exhaust your vasanas. And also because of the following reason, you must fight. And that reason he is giving the, in the next verse. So this is like a continuation of the words of warning from the previous verse. So bhav jen kaunte ni badha suven karmanaha kartum na ichasi yatmohat krishyasi avshaha Apitata, so bhav jain, born of your own nature. Kontye, that's Arjun. Ni badha, bound. Swain, your own. Karmana, by actions. Kartum, to do. Na means not, ichh si, you wish. Yat means that, mohat, through delusion. Karishya si, you shall do avashaha, helpless. Api means also, tat means that. O son of Kunti, bound by your own karma, born of your own nature, that which through delusion you wish not to do, even that you shall do helplessly. <clears throat> so Lord Krishna is saying that I am asking you to fight not because I have no personal sympathies for you but because that is the only course left for you. You have no other choice. Even though you are insisting that I will not fight he says it's merely an illusion. You will have to fight because your nature will assert itself. Because actions we do are propelled by our own vasanas. And they shackle our personality. So again we all know Arjun is essentially of the Rajagun type. He must fight. See, this Pandav prince, all of a sudden, cannot become a Pandit, have predominantly Sattvic nature. He won't be able to retire in the solitary place and live a life of steady contemplation. His own Vasanas won't let him. And because of wrong thinking and miscalculation, Arjun feels that he does not like war. He is not ready to face it. But in spite of his determination, he will be compelled to fight by his own nature. That's what Lord Krishna is saying over here. 
He who has no control over his mind becomes a victim of the circumstances. He gets thrown up and down by the fancy of the things around him. We got to gain mastery over our mind. We got to learn how to stand firmly, unshaken by the circumstances. Use the pure light of wisdom. So that's why he is teaching him how to do his duty with the help of the wisdom, the buddhi yoga. Greater the control of the mind by the intellect, the nobler is the person. You have to remember that intellect is a superior, higher, subtler than the mind. Nature of the great person will depend upon the nature of the values and his intellect. It will reflect in the actions. So we are told by Lord Krishna here, remember me constantly. He has repeated that many times, remember me constantly. What does this mean? How should we remember him? Does it mean meditating upon the form of Lord Krishna? What should be our relationship with him? Are we to remember him as a historical event? Dwarkadhish? Or remember him as intimately connected with us as a presence expressing life? These questions are answered in the next verse. How are we to remember him? <coughs> verse number 61. Ishvara Sarva Bhuta Nam Hari Deshe Arjun Tishthati Brahmyan Sarva Bhutani Yantra Arudani Maya Ishwa the Lord Sarva Bhuta Nam of all beings Hari Deshe in the hearts Arjun Tishthati dwells Brahmyan causing to Revolve. Sarva Bhutani, all beings. Yantra Arudani, mounted on a machine. Maya by illusion. The Lord dwells in the hearts of all beings. O Arjun, causing all beings by his elusive power. To revolve as if mounted on a machine. So he is emphasizing the dependence of the soul upon God. He says, Arjun, whether you choose to obey me or not, your position will always remain under my dominion. The body in which you reside is a machine made from my maya. Based upon your past karmas, I have given you the kind of body you deserved. And I am seated in it. And not only in your body, I am seated in everybody. Sarvabhutana. So the advice given by Lord Krishna is clear and beyond all shades of doubt. Remember the Lord. As the one who organizes, who controls, who directs all the things, without whose command nothing can happen. This entire nature, the Prakriti, it runs because of the laws of the Ishwar. If we drop something, we think we are dropping. And it's falling. No. We might think that we are dropping, but it's falling because of the law of gravity. 
So law of nature is in every place. And this law is Ishwar's law. In his presence alone, everything can happen. That's why he keeps on saying, remember the Ishwar. Remember him as the Ishwar. Do not remember the Lord as merely a personified power, but recognize him as an who dwells in the hearts of everyone. When we say that the Lord dwells in the heart of all living beings, we do not mean the physical heart. In philosophy, the use of the word heart is more figurative than literal. Because sometimes we say that individual has a large heart or a good heart. What do we really mean when we say that? We really mean that that person has the qualities of love and humane. So residing thus in the heart, meaning in the mind of one who has cultivated the divine qualities. What are the divine qualities? Love, kindness, patience, affection. Tenderness, forgiveness, charity. Those are all virtues. So the Lord lends the power to all living creatures to action. He is the one who energizes us. Everything revolves around him. The pure consciousness, which we call Atma, in itself does not act. But in its presence, the prakriti, the matter, gets vitalized and acts. And prakriti is, our body is made out of prakriti. Our mind is also made of prakriti. Our intellect also. Everything other than atma and paramatma is Prakriti. Without the Atma and Paramatma, Prakriti is inert. So the Atma conditioned by the body, mind and intellect expresses dynamism and action. And we recognize as the manifested individuality. So the supreme functioning through the total bodies as the cause of all actions is called Ishwar. So this life of functioning in each one of us is the master, the controller, the director, the lord of our individual activities. That's what we have been learning in this great scripture. So what he says that uh, you don't think you are independent of me in any condition. Sometimes you forget it, your ego makes it forget it, but you cannot be independent of me. So we got to always remember. How do we remember? Through all our activities. Do our actions for Lord himself. What are our responsibilities and duties towards Lord? In the next verse, he says that. Tam eva sharnam gach sarv bhaven bharat tat prasadat pram shantim sathanam prapyasi shashvatam Tam means to him. Ev means even. Sharnam gach surrender. Take refuge. Saravabhaven, wholeheartedly, with all thy being. Bharat, that's for Arjuna. Tat prasadat, by his grace. Pram, supreme. Shantim, peace. Sathanam, the abode. Prapyasi, shall obtain. Shashvatam, eternal.
surrender and fly unto him for refuge. Tam ev sharnam gacha. With all your being, that means wholeheartedly. O Bharat, by His grace you shall obtain <clears throat> supreme peace and the eternal abode. So, Sharnam Gacha. Being dependent upon God, the soul must also depend upon His grace. To get out of its present predicament. That's the only way to attain the supreme ultimate goal. Self-effort is needed, but it's not. It's never sufficient. We need God's grace also. He grants his divine knowledge divine bliss and he is the one who releases us from this bondage. However, to receive that grace that we need to qualify ourselves by surrendering to him. And what are we surrendering? We are surrendering our ego. Renounce the ego and act. The ego is the cause for all our sense of imperfections and sorrow. Because what is ego? Ego is a non-identification with our self, the real self. That's an ego. Thinking that I'm the body. I am my achievements. I am my intellect. I am my trophies. They are all limited. They are nothing compared to him. So the ego is the cause for all our sense of imperfections and sorrows. So that's why Lord Krishna has been advising us to surrender our ego unto the Lord by developing a devoted attitude of dedication, which is bhakti. So that's why over here I said, he's saying, fly to me. We often fly towards Maya. He says, fly towards me. Take refuge with all your will. We are often very skeptical about it. These kind of assurances which God made himself. We like to question everything. We want to be intellectually convinced. So that's why he is convincing our intellect also. He says, live and act with your heart resting in self-dedicated surrender to the consciousness. So do your duties. Do you what you need to do. But have a little harmonious oneself of life everywhere. So we are asked to identify ourselves with the soul rather than the vehicles of its expression. Because when we are expressing ourselves, identifying with the vehicles, whether it's a body, mind, intellect, that is ego. And he who has surrendered totally gains an intellect which is fully awakened. And external circumstances cannot toss and crush him or his individuality. The body and mind of such an individual who has learned ever to keep the refreshing memory of the present will never make a foolish demand. So that's why he says, you will have my grace. 
Remember, to the extent we identify ourselves with God, to that extent his light and power becomes ours. That is called prasad, the grace. And as what happens with that grace? Grace keeps on accumulating within through that integration of the personality, constant surrender of the ego, we obtain the supreme peace, he says. Tat prasadat pram shantim. Supreme peace and the eternal resting place also. So just look, look at him. First to surrender wholeheartedly. We'll have a grace. Through that grace, supreme peace. Through that supreme peace, we will obtain the eternal abode. In this verse number 62, how much he is promising us. But it has to start from us though. If we don't do the first thing, we don't surrender our ego, then sure, the rest will not happen. And also remember this beautiful word, Sarva Bhavin, with one's all being. So that means the surrender should not be a temporary self-deception. We must grow into a consciousness of the presence of the divine in all the planes of our existence. That is Sarvabhavain. Because without bringing all the levels of our being and all the facets of our personality to love him, we won't be able to drown our ego sense. By doing this, the delusion will end. We will have a divine experience. And we will live fully the state of immortality of Godhood. This is the promise he is making. See, we like the end result. We got to make sure that we do our part also first. Because these are the rules God follows. And there's no partiality about it. It's not about certain people or certain times. God follows his rules. He never breaks them. We got to remember that. So in conclusion, Lord Krishna says, Iti te gyanam akhyatam guhyat guhutaram meya vimrishye etat ashashena yatha ichasi tatha kuru. Iti means dasya. Te means to you. Gyanam, wisdom. Akhyatam, explained or declared. Guhyat. Then any all, any secret. See, Guhiyat. Guhutaram, greater secret. Maya by me. Vimrishya. Vimrishya means pondering or reflecting. So having reflecting upon. Etat this, a sheshin, fully. See, shesh means a remainder. A shesh means no remainder, nothing left out, fully, completely. Yatha means as, ichasi, you wish, you choose. Tatha means so, Kuru means act, or do. The wisdom which is greater secret than all secrets has been declared to you by me. Having reflected upon it fully, you now act 
as you choose. This can be considered the closing verse of the Gita discourse, actually. Because Lord Krishna is giving Arjun the freedom. He says, I did my part as a guru, as a teacher. Now, the ball is in your court. You do as you wish. And what is the secret? Secret means a profound. Spiritual knowledge is profound and it's not realizable through direct perception. We cannot see it with these eyes. That's why Lord Krishna mentioned earlier that I'll give you the Gyan Chakshu. You cannot see me even though I'm here. So that's why he's using the word Guhyat and Guhutaran. It needs to be learned through the Gurus and the scriptures. That's why it is described as a secret. We saw in the second chapter also, Lord Krishna revealed the knowledge of the soul. Because second chapter, Sankhya Yoga. He used the word Guha, the secret knowledge. Then again in the 7th and the 8th chapter, he expressed his power as Guhatar, more secret. And 9th chapter, he used the word Guhatam, the most secret. That was a Bhakti. 9th chapter was about Bhakti. So remember that secret doesn't mean that you don't tell anybody. Secret means it's very profound. So subtle. Like a bhakti. Can we see bhakti? Bhakti is the rust in our life which we cannot see. Can't even express. Guhutam. So the spiritual truth and the right way of living which has been discussed in this great scripture, that is the secret of all secrets. So it's not easy for a person to know the Gita way of dynamic life or the Gita way of truth unless we start living the truth of Gita. The wisdom of Gita. This is not something just to be read. Not something just to be remembered, memorized. Gita teachings we got to live. Even a subtle intellect which is very efficient in knowing the material world will fail to feel the presence of this subtle, eternal, infinite self. So, Guhiyam. Often it's misused, this word, and we think that we cannot just share it with anybody. So then he says, reflect over it, we Mrishya. Any amount of listening cannot make us a wise person. We got to learn how to apply this knowledge. Because we know the knowledge gained through reading or listening must be assimilated. We got to learn how to bring this into our understanding. Only then it can become wisdom for us. We got to learn how to put the ideas between the mind and the intellect and chew them properly. That is reflection. In Sanskrit, it's also called manan. Manan. So then he says, therefore, so after reflecting upon it, you act as you please. We all have the choice, the free choice. Do we want to follow 
the Gita wisdom? Because there's no compulsion. In the outer material world, there could be compulsions, but in the path of spirituality, there's no compulsion. A human personality cannot be forced by compulsion to grow into its moral, ethical, and spiritual unfoldment. By law, we have that choice. Law of nature, I'm talking about. Certain directions are pointed out by the gurus and the sages. But ultimately, it's our choice. So the true masters will not persuade their generations through, even through miracles or violence or false promises. They only give the wisdom and they say, it's up to you. That is the quality of a true prophet. So having placed before him all the facts and figures of life, principles, methods of living, Lord Krishna is inviting Arjun to make his own independent decision after considering all the points. Devotion to the Lord is the secret of success in Karam Yoga. This is explained in the next verse. Sarva guhatamam bhuya, shrinu me parmam vacha, ishtaha asi me dridamiti, tataha vakshyami te hitamu. Sarva guhatamam, the most secret of all. Bhuya again. Shrinu here, me my, parmam supreme vacha, the word. Ishtaha beloved, asi you are. Made of me, dridam, firm or dearly, dridam. Iti das, tataha, therefore, vakshya me. I will speak. Te means your hitam, what is good. Lord Krishna says, here again, my supreme word, most secret of all. Because you are dearly beloved of me, therefore I will tell you what is good for you, for your hit. The teacher may know the deepest secret, but the teacher may not necessarily reveal it to the student. Because before sharing it, teacher considers many things. See, just like a preparedness of the student to receive it, comprehend it. Will the student benefit from it? Right now, looks like Lord Krishna is feeling confident that Arjuna will be able to grasp. And he says, for your good, let me summarize it again. An identical situation we saw in the closing verses of Kain Upanishad also by the Rishi. So Lord Krishna has concluded his entire discourse. That's why he says the wisdom has been declared to you by me. And then he says, do as you please. But then he says again, I will repeat the profoundest wisdom. Arjun, listen again to this supreme wisdom. The motive force behind every teacher coming out into the world to preach, to explain, to expand again and again is the teacher's abundant love for the mankind. That's what we see over here. He says, Tataha Vakshyami Te Hitam, for your good, 
I want to say it again. So he is going to repeat here the salient factors of his philosophical goal and also the means to realize them. Because Arjun is dearly beloved of Lord Krishna. So he is recapping what he has already said. So most secret of all, his scheme of right living, noble endeavor, in brief, he is going to tell us in the next verse, verse number 65. And what is it? We'll look at it next week. Let's do the Shanti part. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnase Purnamadai Purname Vavishyate Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much for joining.